This is a new episode of We Are 757 The Show. We got the homie Stephen Whitley in the building, a.k.a. Diesel. How do you get that name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got that joint um, when I was nine years old. I was actually playing for the Norfolk Wildcats, man, uh, playing for Coach Cliff, uh, Matt Coleman's father. Um, and one of the practices, we had to come up with a nickname in the inner circle. I was kind of shy at the time, didn't really know what to say. So one of my teammates... Uh, Janai Powell played at South Carolina State. His dad just yelled out in the crowd because I couldn't find one. He was just yelled out Diesel, you know, because I was a big bully guard and everything like that. Really want Diesel at the time, just big, <laughs> you know what I mean, bullying. So from there, from when I was nine, just stuck with me ever since, man. You know, so I was able to try with, you know, with the Diesel name, so. <laughs> That's what's up. I didn't know you was a twin to it, say you was a twin. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got a twin brother, man. Uh, he ran ran track. You know, he used to be heavily involved in the athletic world. You know, he had some um, uh, career-ending injuries, you know. So, you know, he kind of got started in, you know, his own fields of interest and what he liked to do. So, yeah, but I got a twin brother, though. Cool. That's what's up. So you from Norfolk, right? What uh, neighborhood you grew up in? Uh, Sherwood area. You know, Sherwood. How, how, how was, how was it like? What was it like growing up in Sherwood? Yeah. Um, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was, you know, it's challenging, man. You know, um, I ain't really grow up in a rough neighborhood per se. You feel me? But the school that I went to and kind of the people that I hung around with, you know, kind of was in those neighborhoods in a sense. You know what I mean? They always knew the vision and goal that I had uh, as a kid, you know, good hearted kids. So I was always, you know, well protected, well taken care of no matter where I went. So I didn't really have to worry about too much when I was growing up. So. Who'd you uh, uh, look up to, like, growing up? Was there other ball players that you looked up to that made you want to play ball? <sighs> yeah, Keyshawn Lee. Um, and it's actually why we're number 34, man. Uh, Jelani Darden, um, I'm, I'm sure you heard of his name. You know, yeah. the point I'm from Norview, him and his oh. brother. Their older brother, uh, Keyshawn Lee. When I was in sixth grade, he was in eighth grade, and um, I kind of looked up to him a lot. Um, looked at him a lot, man. He took me under his wing, uh, kind of taught me a lot of stuff with basketball and everything. And um, I was wearing number three before him. Um, and then when I met him and stuff like that, I changed my number to 34. And that's really why I wear 34. So but Keyshawn Lee is my guy, man. If you don't know who Keyshawn Lee is, he was a murderer. <laughs> he was a murderer. I mean, he had some situation, you know, he unfortunately, you know, basketball, was kind of on the back end of his mind. But, you know, when he stepped on that floor, though, he was a different breed, you feel me? Um, and that's, you know, that's somebody who I looked up to, so. Did you, uh, was it always basketball for you, or did you play other sports growing up? Oh, I played other sports. Um, played football and basketball. Those were the main two. I tried baseball, you know, but eh, <laughs> not my cup of tea, you feel me? So, but I did football. I was pretty solid in it, but um, basketball was always my love. So, you know, I stuck with it. What was that? What was that moment when uh, people was like, "Yo, you could take off in this basketball thing. You should keep pursuing it." Um, probably my junior year of high school. Uh, my junior year of high school, the summertime probably. Um, I was always solid in high school. Uh, I was a role player in my first two years. Uh, my ninth grade year, I didn't play varsity. Uh, go check who we had my ninth grade year. Uh, 20, I think that was 2010. You know, I didn't play uh, varsity that year, so I played JV. Uh, 10th grade, I was a role guy, you know, so I just came off the bench, kind of played my role, hit shots, you know, did what I had to do. 11th grade year, when everybody left, you know, that's kind of when my, you know, everything went up. You know, numbers exploded. People kind of was able to realize who I was as a player, what I could do. Um, and that was kind of when, that summer when I played for Boo M's uh, B team, Coach C.J. Clemens and uh, Coach Wood, that was kind of the summer where guys was like, wow, like Diesel is actually, you know, he could, he could play, you know, at the next level, you know, at the highest level. Um, and that was also the summer I lost a lot of weight during. So my 11th grade summer is when I was like, yeah, you know, if I keep working, you know, I could kind of be solid at this thing. So. What was it like playing at uh, Booker, Booker T? Because I know uh, when I played, I played in uh, – 07, but well, I graduated in 07 and 06. We will, I played at Tallwood. We used to, uh, oh, man. <laughs> oh, we, man. We, used to, we used to beat Booker T, but then they end up winning the state championship that year, too. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
the Booker Dome is different, man. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's different. <laughs> anybody that that that's grown up in Norfolk, anybody growing up in the area, when you was coming up, you know, what I mean, you was there in that in that area. You know, what I mean, if you was heavily involved in basketball, you was there, man. Uh, you know, packed housing, sold out, AC don't work, hundred <laughs> degrees. We all over top of each other, you know what I mean? And it's different. It's a different feel, you know. You got people. It's like, like you playing at Duke in a sense, you know what I mean? But it, it's the the lights is on, but you got burgundy, you know what I mean? That color ain't bright. That's a dark color. You feel me? So they ain't really that that you know them them lights ain't really that that bright. You feel me? That dark color though, it make everything look dim. Everything look a little different in there, like you in the trenches in a sense. You know what I mean? So you gotta show up. That book of dome is different. It's real, you know. What I mean, it's not a lot of people that can last in that, but I mean, it's real. So, what was it like playing in the Eastern District then? Um, hello. Get out of here, bro. Oh. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Oh, you see me? All right, yeah. Right, you said what was it like when I was playing in Eastern District? Yeah. Um, it, was, it was solid, bro. Um, it was solid. It's um, the Eastern District. It was kind of, you know, back then you kind of had guys that were around when I was growing up. It was like a lot of dog competitive guys. I can't remember off the head too many guys. Um that kind of went D1 in the Eastern District. Mm -hmm. When I was playing, like my junior and senior, I can't remember too many. But needless to say, like, that that goes to show you, like, it was a, it was a dog film, you know what I mean? Dog round. We was able to compete with anybody, regardless if you had D1, D2, like, it don't matter, you feel me? It was, it was bragging rights. That Eastern District was all about bragging rights, you know what I mean? We kind of knew in this area that what we was about, we was about pride. You know, we was about, we was about heart, you know what I mean, and dog mentality. And that's kind of what carried us um, that Eastern District for so long. You know what I mean, the competitive nature and everything that we had, you know, and we was just a lot able to, you know, bring in crowds and stuff like that. But Eastern District was crazy, man. It was, it was a different type of feel. I was, I was mad that they changed it up, though, man. I ain't like how they did that, man. That wasn't good for the culture at all. It still sucks. Like, what, this year, what, five state championships in one area? Yeah, man. Like, what, like there's no bragging right. What is that? Yeah. Like, what is that, man? But, I mean, again, I mean, you know, I'm a 7-5 guy, so, I mean, like, uh, I don't got no problem with everybody getting the ring, but <laughs> my young bulls. But when I was playing, though, it was different. You know what I mean? One ring. You feel me? I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get one. But like I said, I'm a competitor at the end of the day. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, I compete. You know what I mean? And I don't mind. You know what I mean? As long as I'm competing and stuff like that, man, I'm a winner. You feel me? We got to go after that one bone. So that Eastern District back then, you feel me? I, I loved how it was and everything like that. And I definitely think it brought the competitive dog out of me. So. True, true. What was um what was D nice like as a coach? Ah oh, man. <laughs> what, what, what? Yeah, oh he he was about everything, man. Um uh, a lot of things with D nice that a lot of people don't understand is like the type of players coach he really is. You know what I mean? Like you got a lot of coaches out here or a lot of men in general that'll tell you you should never let another man take take your confidence, right? Mm -hmm. You know, tear your confidence down, whatever, whatever. But that's kind of false, man. I mean, like, you got to think about a head coach, right, coaching you. you know what I mean, he controlling your playing time and everything. You come in and make a mistake, you on eggshells immediately, you out the game. Now you're trying to play a perfect game when it's no perfect game, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So coaches can kind of take your confidence in a sense. One thing about Coach Sandlin that he really is good at is getting on you, but then building you up two times more to give you that confidence and make you feel like you that man. You know what I mean? Like he ain't gonna never put you in a situation and feel like you aren't an asset or a value to the team. It's always a, whatever role you are, if you a rebounder, I mean, you a, 
you you were rebounding. You know what I mean? Like you were all star rebounder. If you score that pill, you score that pill. Like he gonna let you know in a sense, like whatever you do, you're the best at it. Mm-hmm. So regardless of what you got going on, you know what I mean? Regardless of how you feel in the moment and stuff like that, Coach Stanley, you always knew he had your back. You know what I mean? And, and always knew he had your best interest. I Man, it was love playing for him. You know, um, every night or every, you know, every night when I was in high school almost, man, I talked to him every night. You know what I mean? Every day we worked out almost. You know what I mean? It was just kind of an extended father figure to me, you know. And I kind of, um, you know, gave off the the what he wanted in an athlete. You know what I mean? Dog, leader, you know, listen, you know. And, you know, just, just be able to be myself in a sense, man. And I, and I think – you know, with him, I, I can't thank him enough, man, because he allowed me to really open up and kind of see this basketball stuff on a different level. You know what I mean? And, and Coach Sandler, man, he, he definitely get, gets my love, man. Shout out to him. So, Facts, facts. What, um, what made you uh, – well, you gradu- I know you graduated from Booker T, but what made you go to uh, Fort Union? Did you have to go, or what made you want to do that extra year? Well, my senior year, um, I broke my hip. Mm-hmm. So in practice, um, I got undercut by one of my teammates. It wasn't on purpose, you know what I mean? But I got undercut by one of my teammates. And uh, my senior year was solid. But, you know, I didn't – I wanted to go D1, you feel me? Um, I didn't have really what I wanted. So uh, I had to improve my SAT scores and everything. And then on top of that, you know, I wanted to go for extra exposure. So – I had a contact through Coach Sandlin, you know, that went to a fork union and played back in the day that got me to connect, uh, went out there, killed, basically. And then, you know, the rest is history at Fork Union, man. So, How'd you do there? Oh, um, it was a rocky start at the beginning, man. You know, um, you know, leaving, I, I never really was away from my family at all. Um, and then let alone, as soon as you go away from your family, you're in the boonies, nobody out there. And I, I'm talking about you drive off the exit and you still got 40 miles left to get to where you need to get to. So like, it's not, you, you're, you're secluded from everybody in a sense. Never really been away from my parents, you feel me? And it's military. So just think about all that smack you at one time. You know what I mean? Once your parents get off that campus. Now I'm thinking like, damn, what's next? You know what I mean? But ultimately I knew where I came from and with the mindset that I had that I was going into it with the right purpose and the right reasons. Yeah. I wanted to get away. You know what I mean, I came from North Virginia, Booker T. Washington High School. You feel me? In order for you to get comfortable sometimes, you got to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. And that was uncomfortable for me. But yet again, I knew if I wanted to get somewhere, this is the next destination and stop that I have to make. So I made it, man. Fork Union at the beginning of it. Um, I played with Kamal Stokes, played at Kansas State Pro now. Played with Kyrie Thomas, you know, played at Creighton, two-time defensive player of the year. Um, he's in the league now. I played beside them. You know, we all started together and everything. But, of course, um, you know, they were, the, they were the options, you know, first two options or whatever. Um, once they committed – Stokes left, um, and he kind of went to school, whatever. So I kind of stepped up in this role, man. And from there, this was about, let's say, like 20 games left in the season. It was early. It was about 20 games left in the season when he left. I mean, I kind of just stepped in and played his role, man. It was crazy. Like, I was putting up, like, 2K numbers, like, unrealistic, like, 23, 15, and 8. You know what I mean? Like, on a consistent night, though. You know what I mean? So, but still, it's crazy because my recruiting won't really even going nowhere at the time. So, like, now I'm putting up these numbers. We playing against uh, Fishburn. We playing against uh, Hargrave, um, St. Tom- Thomas Preps, like, all of these schools and everything like that, man. And I'm trying to, like, figure out I'm killing, but, like, what's going on? Like, I ain't getting nothing, whatever, whatever. But, you know, needs to say after the year, um, I started taking trips and everything. Um, started hearing from different schools and stuff, and I was just going there, you know, killing their visits and all that stuff, getting offers. So uh, it was pretty solid, man. Fort Union definitely – I definitely went there with a plan, you know, and came out with my plan of uh, being accomplished. So so why so why uh, Robin Morris? What made you pick Robin Morris first? Um, It was different. You know, I know it's more life out there than what I was seeing, you know, so – when I first thought about Robert Morris, you know, I thought about 
being up north. Um, I thought about, you know, being in a different atmosphere, man. Um, when I was at Fork Union, I really, we really couldn't watch TV that much. You know what I mean? It came on a certain amount of time, whatever, blah, blah. So I kind of remember um, actually when the NCAA tournament was going on in March, the first round, Duke had to play Robert Morris. And that was actually the first game that I was able to see on that day before taps. Taps is when you go to sleep, basically, mm -hmm. uh, in military school. It taps, lights out, go to sleep. You know what I mean? So before that happened, I was able to watch Duke and Robert Morris. So after that, one my guys in there, and they're just like, man, I can really see you playing the Robert Morris, you know what I mean? Offense, they, you know, the way they play, your style, they all, blah, blah. So after that, I'm looking up like Robert Moore's, uh, like everything, just seeing what they was about, you know. So they came to the gym and stuff like that. They was really recruiting a big Jarrell Spellman. That's that Sacred Heart now. They was recruiting him. Uh, so I came in. We played against Hargrave at Fork Union, um, rivalry game. I actually hit the buzzer beater to win that game. Well, to send it into – no, to win that game. Yeah, I, I hit the buzzer beater to win that game. Um, and I made the last defensive stop uh, to seal the game. Um, so after that, I really weren't hearing from them, like I said, but towards the end of the year, I guess, a guard transfer from Robert Morris. Mm -hmm. So when a guard transfer from Robert Morris, this was around the time where I was kind of starting to pick up O's, but like kind of not in the, you know, kind of, it wasn't like heavily picking up, you know what I mean? So I picked up like a couple, you feel me? But it wasn't really too heavy. So they was kind of, as soon as they seen it, I only had like an offer or two. Um, they kind of jumped on me quick, man. Uh, and, they, and they show love, you feel me? Um, it was all love over there and everything like that. But, you know, that's kind of how I got involved with that Robert Moore situation, so. Did you uh, did you go on, go on a visit there? Yeah, 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 I went on a visit. Um, I was there with uh, the guy, Lucky Jones. You know, we worked out together and everything. Uh, so, but it was solid. They got a campus, sit on the hill. Very pretty campus, man. Um, you know, they got some solid people in there, everything. Uh, Robert Morris was love, you know, um, for the, pe the people and the environment, you know, it stood for. You know, I wasn't, you know, me and the coaching staff, we butted heads, you know what I mean? We weren't on the best um, terms, you know what I mean? So it wasn't my best fit in a sense. So I had to leave, you know what I mean? It was some situations that happened. I had to go. You know what I mean? So after once once I put my name in a little transfer portal, um, I was actually going to commit to a &T. Like, this is the real truth. You know what I mean? I put my name in the transfer portal. I didn't want to come back home. Like, this is the honest truth. Um, and Joyner, Coach Joyner, who was actually recruiting me at the time when I was in high school, but couldn't offer me right at that moment because he was a new coach and – on top of that, all his scholarships were full. So he was he was offering me a preferred walk-on spot. The next year he was going to give me a scholarship. So when I went on a visit anyway, needless to say, he reached back out to me first when I transferred. So I went on a visit there, and I kind of, you know, it was pretty solid and everything like that. Um, and I wasn't really the wasn't really able to see like the players and all that stuff, talk to people, kind of get like adjust everything because it was towards the end of the year, nobody there. So I had to leave. Um, and kind of, I talked to my man, James Whitaker, that went to Norcom, and he told me a little bit about it, but needless to say, um, Coach CJ reached out to me, you know, Coach Clemens from Norfolk State, he reached out to me and was like, man, I can't have you coming to me, I cannot be on my team, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> which I was just like, yeah, but you know, I ain't really trying to be home and all that other stuff, I'm going to be in the same neighborhood, you know what I mean? Booker T, right across the street from Norview, you know, I'm in Nor Norfolk State, so I'm like, Man, I don't know. But he was like, well, just come and see. You know what I mean? Just come and take a little visit and see when you come home. You know what I mean? Unofficial visit. So I'm right up the street. Won't nothing too serious. I would just come and see. But in my mind, I had my mind really set on a &T, You feel me? So when I get on the campus, I never really walk Norfolk State campus. And if you haven't walked Norfolk State campus, you need to walk Norfolk State campus. <laughs> it is crazy. Like, it's really crazy. And, I, and I, like, when I seen it, I went on a visit. And when I seen that joint, man, I was just like, wow, this is, this is different. And then let alone um, just talking to everybody um, that was involved over there at Norfolk State, man. Uh, 
some of them already knew who I was, you know, at Booker T and everything. So they was kind of heavily involved. You know, it was all love. Uh, my academic advisor that was actually at Robert Morris when I was there, mm -hmm. she was my academic advisor at Norfolk State. She came over with with me. It didn't happen that way, but she came over with me, if you get what I mean. So uh, that was all love from there, man. And, you know, the stuff with Norfolk State is history. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 was, uh, what were your friends like when you came back home? What were your friends? Are they happy for you? Were people happy for you? Or they was like, man, why you go to Norfolk State? That's right up the street. Yeah, man, it, it was all love, man. You know, my friends, you got to think, like, my friends really weren't seeing me much. You know what I mean? Like, going from after high school, I went to Fork Union, then I went to Robert Morris. So when I kind of came back after, the, you know, that year and they let them know and it was a sit-out year, I really had more time to spend with a lot of friends that I, you know, my homeboys, um, my parents, my family, friends. You know, I was able to spend a lot more time with them than I was, you know, when I was I was gone, stuff like that. So it was all love, though. True, true. So I know, I know, NSU is a HBCU. What was the HBCU like? Like, <laughs> <sighs> so you got to experience. I mean, I I can't just put it like this. I was able to experience both. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, a PWI and the an HBCU, uh, and it's not close. Um, <laughs> the 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 light if if you if you're looking for you know, I don't know man it's hard to explain what <laughs> it's really hard to explain the HBCU man but in a nutshell it's love like you want to talk about somewhere where you can build family you know learn uh ex you know experience triumph all within the black community um it's nothing but love you know what i mean it, it, it's 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 unreal, man. I I don't really even know how to explain the HBCU life. Like you just gotta. That's just something you have to experience on your own. You know, what I mean, a lot of people don't get that opportunity to experience that. But I'm like, if you're having a child, you know that that kind of need to be something that they look into, even if they don't go there. But an HBCU is definitely a solid school, man. So definitely. So, you get, so I know you had to um, sit out your sophomore year. But then you get the red shirt sophomore year. The first time you put that Norfolk state across your chest, what was that feeling like? Mm. Stepping on that court in front of your hometown. Hometown was crazy, man. <laughs> you know, just to think about everything that you done did for the hometown. You know, growing up in the hometown, they could come back and play college ball here. It's, it's unreal. You know what I mean? You got people right across the street where I just hooped at. You know what I mean? <laughs> some of them same guys coming right up the street to see me in another uniform. You know what I mean? In college doing the same thing I love to do. So it was, it was, it was unreal, man, but it was love. You know what I mean? Um, being able to wear Norfolk state across your chest, you know, knowing this is where I came from, man, you know, I hold everything with pride. You know, I'm all about positivity, all about love, man. And, and Norfolk, I really, you know what I mean? I'm all about Norfolk. You know what I mean? So when I was able to do that, man, it was just, I mean, a dream come true, really. A lot of people talk about putting on for their home, but I really did it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah, it's in a nutshell, man. What, you, led, you led your team in scoring sophomore year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in every category, really, but uh -huh. every category, really, but one, man. But <laughs> well, they said you played a one through the four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played a one through the four. Um I played the one for before, man. I can strap your guard. I can strap your big. However you want me to do it, I can do it for you, man. So I remember, yeah. I remember seeing you. I think it was after your sophomore year. I went to pro am, and I didn't know, I didn't know you much. I, I just started recording, but I mean, I think you came down the, like came down the middle, and somebody bumped you. Oh, I know exactly. And you still went up, man. Ah, I don't <laughs> do it. I know exactly what Clay was doing. I was like, damn, who was that? And then, yeah, exactly. And then I guess, what, your junior year, I, I start um, coming to film Norfolk State games. Mm -hmm. And uh, you was on a bench. You got, got hurt. I was yeah. like, oh. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, man. That junior, that junior year was that junior year was amazing. Man. That yeah. Junior. It's crazy, man. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, it was crazy. Just to even think about, man, my sophomore year, um, 
I actually kind of got thrusted into the point guard situation. So little do a lot of people know, I wasn't even really supposed to play point guard. Um, Zanai Robinson, who was a, a former HBCU All-American, he kind of – he was a starting point guard. Um, he messed his back up coming into the year, and I still won't play in point at that time. Um, but I was leading the team in every category, including assists, you know what I mean, from the wing. Yeah. So after a while, my coach was just like, well, why not just put the ball in his hand, you know, best ball handler right now currently on the team, and he's averaging the most assists, most points. So, you know what I mean, why not? Um, and then from there, you know, I was able to thrust and thrive at the position I was playing. Um, we didn't have the best winning season that year, but again, um, it was a lot of key pieces that we missed. Um, towards the end, you know, the beginning of the year. Once I pl started playing the dot, it kind of took us a couple games to get right, but then we started rolling, you know what I mean? And we was going on win streaks, six, seven um, win streaks. You know, we did a couple of those, man. Um, we got put out in the semifinals, uh, but needless to say, that sophomore year, man, it was a memory in itself. Um, a lot of people don't understand what went, what happened through that year, you know, but we don't make no complaints. I mean, that year, my sophomore year, you know, we had a kid with a torn ACL, a kid with a torn meniscus, uh, a, a kid with two kids with bad, uh, bad back discs. You know what I mean? They, this was messed up in their back. Um, myself, uh, I had a sprain. My wrist was sprained and my finger. Um, it's actually taped up in, in my IG post on one of my pictures. You know, so we had a lot of bang-ups on that team. And these are all starters. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you got to – and people that play major minutes, so you kind of got to think about everything that was going on that year. You know what I mean? It was – it was we definitely changed, though. You know, once I was able to play the dot, man, I think that, you know, kind of helped us out that year, you know. And then jumping into my junior year, um, you know, we had a historical season. Man. Yeah, y'all started off with, you know, neck and neck with ODU with, yeah. uh, at the scope. That was That was big. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was that was my soft. That was during soft. Oh, that was sophomore year. Yeah, that was during yeah. soft. So sophomore year, man. Um, dang, we were supposed to win that game. We were really supposed to win <laughs> I that. I was game. like this, and then at the end, it's like I just stopped. So you got to think about like that game was mad packed, right? So mm -hmm. you got to think mentally. You think about ODU and Norfolk State. A lot of people is gonna favor ODU off rip, right? So in that game, I came with a different mentality on a sense of, like, I wanted to poke my chest out first so my team could follow, right? And I, and I remember when I was talking to – I remember when I was talking to myself before the game, I was like, if any situation happened during the game, as far as physically, I'm going to be the one to get involved as a leader. You know what I mean? So hear me out. This is the reason why I did it. With the ODU and Norfolk State, everything going on, we was getting our ass whooped kind of between it. You know what I mean? Um, my sophomore season. You know what I mean? We won't get our ass whooped, but we was kind of losing. You know what I mean? And it won't really where we wanted to be at. So, as a team, we about to play ODU. Um, you kind of got guys that, you know, we was ready, but you can kind of tell when you look at somebody, you know what I mean, if they really ready or not. You know what I mean? So, a little situation happened in the game. Needless to say, this is the ODU Norfolk State game. Uh, ball goes into BJ, I want to believe. I mean, Brandon Stiff. It might have been Brandon Stiff. Actually, the big man for ODU. Mm -hmm. That's the name, I think. Um, it goes into him. And I foul him hard. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, a foul. Like, you want to, you know what I mean? You don't want to fight foul. Mm -hmm. But I do that because, one, I knew Brandon St I already knew him before the game. You know what I mean? So, it's going to be some talk in there, but, you know what I mean, blah, 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 whatever. But I did that because after that, it was a little altercation with us, and people had to break it up. But I knew if I was to get in the altercation, my team is going to back me up, and that's going to bring some fight out of them, right? So I got, I got a tech early. Like this, is right, like, this is right at the beginning of the game. Like, a tech early, like the first five of the game, two fouls back-to-back, I got to sit down the rest of the game, like the rest of the first half. Mm -hmm. My team going out there going crazy, though. You know what I mean? And, and you're able okay. to see the dog mentality that's in the, in, you know what I mean, when they playing and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is the real reason why I did what I did. But he say we lost that game um, and stuff like that, you know, because I was in foul trouble. You know what I mean? That's really why we lost. You know what I mean? So you heard me, Amar. You heard me all. Yeah, I was in foul trouble. 
that's why we lost. You know what I mean? But um, needless to say, man, that was a great game. Um, that was a great game between us at ODU. So. I think it was big for the city, you know, just north of just this side of the water in general, you know what I'm saying? They don't play too too many times often unless it's football. You know what I mean? Right. But right, right, right. I think I think it is it's it's needed, man. Like you said, the, the community kind of feeds off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know how much interest they have in the community feeding off of it, but like I said, um, this is something positive that you can give to the community every year. It's something that they can look forward to. Um, and, I, and I think for bragging rights and bragging purposes, you know, it should be done. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't understand why it shouldn't be done. We are in the same city 10 minutes up the street. We, why shouldn't it be done? You know what I mean? So. Uh, what's the feeling like playing in those Battle of the Bay games? Because I know them Hampton games get crazy. Oh, yeah. They get real crazy. <laughs> man. They get real crazy. It's like, it's like um, man. I don't know. It's 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 something you gotta come come ready to you know come ready to perform at. Um, everybody shows up for them games, from the the best player to the worst player. You know what I mean? The worst player is gonna come in and might give you a performance like the best player. You know what I mean? So you gotta be ready, regardless. You can't take nobody for granted. Can't take nothing for granted, man. It's a lot of hoorah and it's a lot of showtime and all that stuff that go on with that battle of the base stuff you know what i mean it's a lot of other things just outside of basketball that go on with that battle of base stuff so if you in the crowd looking around you know what i mean watching a band play you might see somebody walk by you know what i mean you like this is it you know you got to be focused while the game going on man it's a a different bragging right you know what that bridge is about you know so when you talk about HBCU basketball and you talk about the rivalry that we had, I mean, it was something totally different. You know what I mean? And it was love in that HB, you know, that battle of the base stuff. So, what was up? Um, now going into your junior year, I know you had a really good junior year. Um, what was what was that locker room like? What was uh, Coach Jones like during those games? Um, my junior year, it really wasn't that crazy for real as far as from coach jones um because of my sophomore year uh my sophomore year like i was mentioning we was we weren't really the best team um we was kind of new kind of um gluing and gelling together you know so we took some whoopings you know but we kind of had a that next year we had a core group of guys that felt that pain and wanted to make a difference um and coach really didn't have to say much but coach um and i think that's what made us good, you know. Ultimately, we was able to police ourselves, you know, and we did everything together um, from one to twelve. You know, it was no click or nothing within our team, and um, I feel like that's why we were special, man. It was a special group, you know, from um, from one all the way down to twelve, man. Everybody was special on that team and contributed at some point in time throughout the season, man. But that junior year was definitely something special for real. How did y'all lose in that? Oh, <laughs> man. You got to talk about that. What, yeah. what, what happened during that game? Uh, so, I mean, all right. So, 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 basically, just the North Carolina Central game, everybody talk about. First of all, we only scored 48 points, man. Yeah. I think for the year, we was averaging like 74 70 through 76. Don't. Don't quote me on that, but do there. You know what I mean? So our top two scores, I was a third leading scorer. Our top two scores didn't score at all. Mm-hmm. DJ was hurt and Nick won't feel in the best. You know what I mean? So they didn't score the ball at all. And we lose by two points. Mm-hmm. Now think about that. You know what I mean? That that that's that's a message in itself. Like, I feel like it was meant to happen in order for us to make history, Mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? Just some stuff like on the layup that I miss on the rebound. You know what I mean? I miss a layup. I get the rebound wide open layup. I miss that somebody normally make, that I normally make, right? And right after that, okay, I miss the layup. Then my man gets the put back, JB, boom, dunks it, and they call a goal ten. Yeah, I mean the, the plays a couple times before that, Stadi hits a clutch tree, a clutch tray on the right wing, and they say his foot was out of bounds. So I just feel like there was a lot in that game within itself that was just like, 
allowed me to see that God was like, you know, I got a path for y'all that I want y'all to go down and y'all going to have to, you know, go this route. So, I mean, I, I won't take it, you know, um, I won't take anything back, man. Um, you know, as I look back on it now, um, everybody got to write their history in their own way, you know. So, unfortunately, you know, we wasn't able to get to the NCAA tournament, but we was also able to make history in the NIT tournament. You know, I kind of do the same similar image that the 2012 team did. So not only do Norfolk State have one of the big, biggest upsets in NCAA history, we also got the biggest upstate in NIT history. You know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, ultimately that was the goal that, you know, God probably had for us. Because you, you think about that, man. I mean, you got a 15-point score, 10-point score, don't score, no points. We lose by two, 48 points. That might have been the lowest we scored all year that year in a championship game. No, that doesn't happen. Man. You know what I mean? So what it needs to say, I mean – you know, the NIT is what we was meant to happen. So, ultimately, that's what happened. So Talk a little bit about that Bama game. That was a crazy game. Crazy yeah, the Alabama crazy. game. Uh, uh, yeah, that was definitely a crazy game. Um, even leading up to the game, you know, our coach kind of was – we was kind of doing a lot of stuff, man, uh, off the court that was kind of taking us – our minds off the game. You know what I mean? We had just lost in the tournament – I mean, the tournament, MEAC tournament. So, our coach was – kind of trying to not do too much basketball stuff, you know, just allow us to breathe, you know, allow us to reminisce on the good time we had throughout the season, but still trying to get us geared and mentally prepared for the, this postseason play, you know what I mean? So um, leading up to the game, um, you know, we did some team activities or whatever, whatever that kind of got us mentally prepared for the game. Going into the game, um, we're warming up, right? As they're walking up, as they're walking out while we're warming up, you can tell in their eyes they think it's going to be a, you know what I mean, a sweet walk. So they they rapping and they got their uh, stretch bands and all that, you know what I mean? And then one of them was just like, uh, you know, I looked at him and one of them looked back at me and, you know, started smiling or whatever. He in the G League now. But I was just like, oh, they think this is going to be sweet. <laughs> Y'all gonna be sweet, uh, no sure, nothing like that. You know what I mean? Nothing like that. I mean, it needs to say we jump right on and punch him in the mouth. Um, it was like our bigs really came to play that game. You know, shout out to our bigs, Alex Long, Jordan Butler. You know, um, if they didn't come out that game and set the tone against a potential uh, first rounder uh, in Hall, um, and then they had uh, uh, Petty, um, Ingram, you know, they had a couple other guys. If they didn't set the tone, man, you know, it would have been a tough game, you know, but both of them combined had double doubles, you know, both of them, their numbers combined, they had double doubles. Um, so, you know, they were able to, you know, make a big difference um, in that game within itself. I mean, and then from there, you know, I was able to kind of just lead the boat, you know, I wasn't really trying to do too much, but just lead the pack, man. And um, once DJ got hot, it was curtains. Yeah, that was crazy. What, he was the nation leading scorer? I mean, nation leading three-pointer that year, right? Yeah, and think, you know what I mean? And think about that. You know what I mean? All he has to do, for real, for real, it was so bad during the championship game. I'm backing up. It was so bad during the championship game that we really didn't even need DJ to score the ball. We just needed him on the court. <laughs> so he could be a, you know what I mean? So he could be a, like, a distraction. So people yeah. get to Space the floor out and then we can work. But, you know, his ankle was bad, so he wasn't able to. Fast forward into the Alabama game, you know, through shooting and everything like that, he still wasn't feeling like himself. So we kind of knew we was going to have to, you know, try to find another way, you know, to get things started. So we was just trying to feed him, feed him, feed him, and he won't hit on much. Won't hit on nothing the first half. So the last play of the first half, I don't know if it was me or Stoddy, one of us. It might have been one of us. But we threw it to him in the corner. It might have been Stoddy. We threw it to him in the corner. He bangs the tray in the corner, last play of the half. And after that, we was down 10. As soon as he hit that tray, I said, we said, it's over. He ain't losing no more. And he come out, man, and he knocks down six of them things in the second half. Man. Gets his rolling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's different though, man. It was um, the Alabama game. You know, once we, once we felt they came out on a you know in a little run in the second half, it was kind of neck and neck. Um, towards that last media of the first half, their big man hit a lot of you know a lot of big shots. Um, it kind of extended the lead, 
Um, and then that's when DJ hit that trade, brought it back down 10. When we come out, they hit another shot, and that was their biggest lead. And right after that, from there, that's when we crept back, you know, and we was just creeping and creeping and creeping and creeping, man. So last play of the game, um, we actually had the ball to seal the game. Um, so we got the ball. Um, the, and this is in regulation, actually. And I got the ball, man. I'm coming off of the screen, right? I come off the screen from the left wing. I'm going right. Um, and I'm about to make a move, man. And my shoe comes off. <laughs> so we were natural to I'm about to make a move and my shoe come off, man. I'm stuck in mud. And then uh, uh, next thing you know, I think we called a timeout. I think that's what happened after that play. We had called a timeout. So next thing, we come in, we draw up a play. I come off. Uh, and I make a move. I get to the hole. I miss the layup, and then JB missed the putback. So we go on OT. Um, from there, um, you know, we go up. Uh, we hit some 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 clutch shots. Uh, Nick hit like a this clutch trade that was you know very deep shot clock violation joint. So he just had to throw it up. He hit that. I hit one from the top of the key that's you know uh, tied the game. And I can't remember who hit the shot to actually put us up. So we get the ball back. And we actually got the ball to seal the game. We're taking the ball out. Uh, my man Nick breaks to the ball. He throws it to him. And it go out of bounds. So now we over here like, boy, we just trying to blow it at this point. You know what I mean? Like, so my man was, you know what I mean? We come back in. He like, yeah, we're going to get it back. We're going to get it back. So we that's what we believe or whatever. So we come back in, man. Last play of the game. Uh, they throw it to – they try to do a little high school play. I mean, that everybody in the book really kind of know almost. But, you know, they throw it out or whatever, and I think the guy just from the baseline, he runs uh, – I think – I don't know if it was a screen or not, but he runs back to the corner. I don't know if they wanted that open three or whatever it is. So, they hit it back to him. He just pumps fakes. Um, no, he – no, K runs him off the three-point line, and then when he drives, he throws up a nasty floater miss, and then, you know, it's history in itself for the Alabama game, so – I know that locker room was crazy. Oh, man. What? <laughs> Water, Gatorade everywhere, chairs everywhere. We talking crazy. It was crazy. I, I was at your uh, coach, what was it, the, the dinner before your senior year, and I was watching the video. Y'all was going nuts. Well, yeah, yeah. We was going insane, man. Okay, okay. So you was at the uh, the little banquet. You was at the banquet. Yeah, I was at the banquet. Uh, okay. Yeah, so – um. Yeah, I seen you crying all of that, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get them. If you know me, man, you know I get them. I get emotional, man. So you now know? so now you you a senior, what, uh, you got a crazy junior year. Right. Um, and a lot of people on your team end up leaving. Look, y'all had about, what, 12, 10 new, newcomers? You know? yeah, we had, yeah, yeah, we had 10, man. That's uh, crazy. Everybody end up leaving from – my junior year, um, you know, because, they, you know, they, they – it wasn't necessarily the – you know, they didn't like, you know, the school and everything that came with it. It was just that junior year we had so much talent within itself that, like, it was kind of a you had to wait your turn type of thing. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of guys don't – you know what I mean? Once you're the man on your team and stuff like that, it, it might be kind of rough, you know what I mean? Especially when you think – that you can, or when you know that you can contribute, you know what I mean? So I'm not knocking those guys at all. You know what I mean? I was in the transfer portal. I get it. I understand. You know what I mean? Those my guys got all love for them. So, um, but they left, you know, and then we had some guys come in, 10 new guys going into my senior year. That's you know what great. I mean? So when I'm seeing this, I'm going through the junior year. I'm, I'm thinking my senior year about to be crazy, you know. Um, I'm just like, wow, man, we about to have a, you know, a, 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 a tough year, you know, a year where we got to start from, you know, the, the ground and everything. So, um, but from there, it was guys that, like, needless to say, man, they came in and they was just, you know, ready to listen, you know, ready to rock, you know what I mean? They're talented. The only thing they didn't have was no experience, you know what I mean? So, we was able to, you know, make some things happen with that. And, you know, the, the senior year wasn't bad at all, man. Um, as you can see, like I said, the inexperience and the chemistry with us was what we had to get right. You know, you got top, you know, guards on our team. We have four guards, Devontae Carter, Jermaine Bishop, Joe Bryant, Devon, and uh, myself included, that can handle the ball, be on, a, you know, the ball at any time. So 
you got to kind of try to get that chemistry right, you know, um, and all that experience with it together under one roof before we could kind of thrive, man. So that was the challenge that we had throughout this year. You know, it was times this year where you was able to see a glimpse of greatness. You know, times you was you seen some triumph. You know what I mean? So and so some you know some um some you know some times where it just wasn't right. You know, we had to get some stuff right. So needless to say, it was just once we did that, you seen it started to be like a progression. You know, in a sense of all right, the game was a lot easier. You know, we was making the game harder for ourselves, just want to do one-on-one -on -one stuff. But once we got the chemistry, it made the game a lot easier. And from there, that's when we kind of thought, like, you know, we kind of – we got a real chance in this Miyai tournament to make something happen. But, of course, you know, with the COVID and everything, you yeah. know, with the situation ending. So so when did y'all get the news? I heard y'all was, like, in the stands watching the game, and then y'all got the news that everything canceled. Man, we was actually – actually, so I get – we get the call that we had to get on the bus, go back – to the school or whatever to meet with the president. This is two hours before the game, our game. Yeah. So I already know what's up. You know what I mean? I'm trying to prepare. This is my senior year. I'm trying to prepare my mind on the ride over there already. You know what I mean? I'm just like, bro, I'm not trying to hear it. So I'm trying to prepare my mind. So we, you know, we come in, we sit down in the bleachers. Um, and our president of the school, she comes in and she basically lets us know what, what's going on and everything. And then um, we was there with, with the girls team as well. Um, and there it was just like unreal, you know, before I went to sleep for the, the my, you know, the game and stuff, my pregame that before I went to sleep, it was almost like 14 conferences that still, not 14, it was, it was probably about six conferences, I'm tripping, that still didn't um, forfeit the season due to COVID. Me at Ghana, one of them. By the time I woke up in an hour and 15, the MEAC was the only conference standing. You know what I mean? So at that point, we already knew. Like, as soon as we woke up, you know what I mean? We seen a text we had to go. At that point, we knew, man. So from there, I was just hurt, man. It, it, it messed up a lot of stuff. You know, I had some some situations that I, you know, had set up with basketball um, that got canceled. Uh, you know, the, the uh, post, you know, post invitation or the post tourneys that you have, um, it's big for a low mid major division one programs, you know, so me not being able to go to that, you know, kind of didn't give me the best situation that I wanted, you know, kind of made stuff a little bit more challenging, but at the end of the day, it's life. You feel me? Um, you know, I'm just gonna put my shorts on the same way I've always done, you know, continue moving on, you know, building. So, so, um, so I know you're pursuing a pro career. What is it like now pursuing a pro career now that COVID messed up a lot of situations? Uh, the main thing I try to preach to myself is patience. Uh, everybody been, you know, my agents and stuff kind of been telling me, you know, the market, you know, how it's slowly opening back up and everything like that. Um, and then, you know, how lot, you know, this lockdown is, you know, causing you know, the benefits and the budgets and all that stuff to go down and stuff like that. So they're just really trying to tell me to stay patient and focus. You know what I mean? Um, it's a long process, though. Um, but, you know, I've just been working out. I work out every morning. Um, you know, I try to work out every morning, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, my gym, the gym that I was using was shut down, you know, for a little period of time, you know, but they kind of opened back up now, so I'm back in there. Um, and then that's just really it. Um once I figured that out, you know, until I, you know, my agent told me I won't get up out of here until everything was over with the COVID and all that stuff. So at that point, you know, I had to find, you know, other things to do, you know. So I kind of started utilizing my other time to be able to, you know, invest in knowledge, you know, and be able to uh, invest in what's going on in today's world, as well as, you um, build on business opportunities and ideas that I've already been thinking about, you know? So I'm not going to say this COVID situation has been a negative for me, you know? Um, it has for my basketball piece in a sense, right? But for knowledge piece and everything off the court, it hasn't, you know, it's opened up doors to a lot of people I didn't have connection with at first, you know, it's allowed me to see a lot of things in different ways, you know, be able to actually grow in my field 
of interest, which is business and stuff like that. Be able to read books and all that other stuff. Not say I didn't have time then, but you know, as an athlete on a college level, you know, it's, it's a little different being a collegiate student athlete rather than just being able to sit down, being able to use your time and, you know, research and stuff like that. So you know, I've been grateful for this situation, man, you know, be able to grow and learn and stuff like that. So I'm not, you know, it doesn't bother me at all too much. So. Along with uh, the COVID situation, I know we've been seeing a lot of crazy videos with the police and a lot of black men. And uh, you took it upon yourself to, you know, you did some uh, social injustice walks. What uh, made you want to step up and do that? Um, well, ultimately, I was asked by um, some coaches in the area to, you know, do it on behalf of the athletes. Um, I, I've all I've been wanting to get involved, um, but the way I reacted when everything was going on was with anger and not logic you know um and that's not not saying that's not the best way to go about a lot of things but it's always two sides to a coin you know and uh, and i don't think that once the coaches bought it to me what they were trying to do and everything like that and i was like well this might be the way that you know it's meant for me to be able to make a difference you know be able to you know calling people to bring change into action, you know, and wanting to bring change to the culture to make a difference moving forward. So nonetheless, it was easy for me to say yes, you know. Um, and what really gave me the motivation to do it, um, is you got to think, man, um, you know, the man's on the ground, mm-hmm. with a knee on his neck, and he's yelling for his mom. You know, I can remember, I, you know, think about that. Right. You could probably remember when you was playing football or whatever you was doing, you fell down, scraped your knee and you yelling for your mom. That's relative in a lot of ways. There is no color in screaming for your mother, if you get what I mean. So when I seen that, I automatically thought like, you know, that's one that could be one of us, man. You know, what I mean, that could be me. That could be you. You know, I got a twin brother, like I said, I hold dear to as well as my pops you know, my mom, you know, that could have been any one of us. And I don't want that to be on my, my realm. I don't, I don't want that to be somebody that I take care of and I, and I love that I got love for. I can't see that happening. Cause like I said, I'm emotional dude. You know what I mean? So if I see that happen, it's, 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 it's not going to be good. So I want to be able to make the change in the right way, you know? Um, and, and I feel like, the call to action as far as, you know, voting, you know, getting involved in the community service, uh, being able to, you know, research and, you know, find out information that you didn't know prior to, you know, in, in your position or to make a difference, man, I feel like it's, it's needed, you know, and it needs to be done. Um, this is the most consistent this nation has ever been collectively as a whole in trying to make a difference. Um, and I think, with the way we were going about things, a lot of good changes have been made, but it's a lot of things that still needs to be changed. Um, and there's no way that we can sit back as a collective unit and not want to get up and make a difference until, you know, things get done. So until what we want to see as people, which is get people in positions to be able to change the political system, the education system, the injustice system, the injustice system as a whole, we got to be able to get out and vote. You know, we got to be able to put people in office that'll be able to vouch for us on our side, that'll be able to talk to us and make decisions on our behalf. You know what I mean? And if that don't happen, then it's not going to happen. You know, so, but we got to be active. You know, we got to be active in everything going on. So ultimately that's why I was, you know, I held the protest and everything, the rally, so. Man, that was love. I appreciate you doing that. For real, no problem, bro. no problem, bro. No problem at <laughs> so, all, bro. So what's next? What's next? What you see in your future? Um, so basically, you know, I got some business stuff coming up. Um, you know, until I leave, you know, get up, get out of here with basketball and everything. I got, you know, my Steve Willie Foundation that, you know, will be, you know, launching pretty soon. Uh, and then, you know, we got some events and everything we got planned for the community coming up under that. So, um, you know, for example, um, August August seventh coming up. Uh, we def we have a a food drive basically, you know, for the food bank of Virginia and Maryland East Shore. Um, and it's gonna be basically seven dollars. Um, so I wore number thirty four. Um, 
and you know three plus four is seven so what we wanted to do on august 7th um from 7 a.m to 7 p.m uh, basically we was going to set up shop uh, at a military circle mall. I mean, not military circle mall, but on military circle, the McDonald's on military circle uh -huh. uh, highway. Um, and we wanted to use that parking lot. Basically, it's going to be a setup out there uh, where I talk about um, the money that I want. we want to collect, uh, my, my foundation. Everything that we collect out there will be given back in a big check split between Virginia, and uh, the Virginia Food Bank and the Eastern Shore Food Bank. Um, and at this event, you know, we got people involved, um, uh, car dealerships, you know, uh, we got people involved, with, you know, with the food and everything, you know, so it's going to be uh, food out there, you know, it's going to be um, a lot of people out there, some information out there that we need to gather um, to make a difference moving forward. But ultimately, that's the next, the next event we have coming up under the foundation. So uh, there's more more info on that coming soon, though, so.